Greetings. <clears throat> My name is King Amnor, Commander Black Star Lord at your service, and we're still drifting through space. Welcome to episode eight, and also be listening to the Elite Dangerous Newsletter one hundred and thirty-eight. We'll quickly mark our next destination, which is not that far away. We have a quick zoom out of where we where we are at the moment. Wait, this is a nebula I want to go see. That's only 3,000 light years away now, which is good. Uh, I went to solar plane because I just wanted to make this little video about anybody else interfering. Looks like there's another community goal at uh, Jack Station. So, let's get back into this travelling through space manners and other things. Frameshift drive charging. We'll get jumping into um, hyperdrive. And we'll have a quick look at the next system. Four, three, two, one, engage. Now, I honestly can't wait for the next patch to come out where you can we actually see the uh, star you're coming towards and other magical little things there too would be cool. And the new sun looks and the new planet looks, that's going to be. And I reckon a decent update. So, let's have a quick look at what we've got here. Before we go play the newsletter, we just want a quick little look at the system. Well, we'll gather these couple of planets while we play the newsletter. There's only four here. I do hope you like this video, and if so, please subscribe. Without further ado, I'm, you can now listen to the Dangerous Newsletter 138. I do hope you enjoy it. Greetings, Commander Black Star Lord. Welcome to the Elite Dangerous Newsletter 138. It has been an amazing week full of exciting yes, news, be. excellent videos, and loads of fun with commanders throughout the world as we came live to you Fuel from GameScom, Germany. Fuel scoop, In this newsletter, we'll be bringing you the highlights from an exciting week with news galore, along with highlights from commanders in the community and what's happening right now in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. As always, you can hear the latest news and updates directly from the development team on our forums, Twitter, Facebook, community homepage, and right here in the newsletter every week, and we're always eager to hear your feedback. Contents this week. Elite Dangerous at Gamesome 2016. David Braben Gamescom Interview. Horizons Highlights. Galnet Focus. Community Goals Update Comes Chatter Elite Dangerous at Gamescom 2016 Have we got news for you? With so many incredible features revealed over the course of Gamesum 2016, it's hard to know where to begin. But, begin we shall with, ship launched fighters. Larger vessels can be fitted out with ship hangars allowing them to construct and deploy fearsome single-seat fighters. Low-cost, stripped-down and heavily armed, fighters specialize in direct support of larger vessels. Favoring maneuverability and firepower over defense, aggressors face an unpalatable choice, waste time and effort engaging the nimble fighter, or focus on the mother ship, risking significant damage from the fighter's powerful weapons. There are three different fighter craft that you can purchase. The Imperial Fighter, the Federal F-63 Condor and the Independent Type A. Each has comparable flight characteristics, all are a joy to fly. Another exciting feature coming to Elite Dangerous is passenger missions. With the all-new passenger lounge coming to 2.2 aka The Guardians, you'll be able to view and accept passenger contracts that are available. At most starports, you'll be able to pick up simple bulk passenger contracts, where you'll take large numbers of passengers from one starport to another. It's simple work, but it pays well. And what better way to transport your passengers than in the luxury beluga? As a specialized passenger liner, 
the Beluga has multiple module slots that can accommodate all types of passenger cabins and will be yours to buy come the Guardians 2.2. In the Guardians, commanders will now have the option to apply any current filter that's in the game to the root plotter. This has huge implications for every commander, no matter how you choose to blaze your own trail. With this extra firepower now at your disposal, you can now hire fighter pilots to help you use it. Each of these stick jockeys has their own appearance, bio and combat rank. The higher the rank, the higher the cost, but who can put a price on victory? Getting the bigger picture has never been easier with revamped planetary maps. You can now use your system map to zoom all the way into a planet and show a 3D representation complete with full surface details. The SIN Broker is a new contact at starport services in low security systems. The SIN Broker will let you pay off fines, claim bounties and hand in combat bonds that relate to any systems and jurisdictions, not just the system you're in. At the launch of the Guardians 2.2 commanders will now be able to move their ships from one starport to another throughout the galaxy. If you desperately want to change into your anaconda, but then realize you'd otherwise miss a key elite traces event if you don't get your eagle, then you can now head over to starport services, and have the ship transported to where you are via the shipyard menu. David Braben's Game Escom Interview With a week already jam-packed with exciting reveals, David has shared even more fascinating insights and news in the future of Elite Dangerous over the last week. You can check these out in full over on our YouTube channel. Please note, we have had unconfirmed a few reports of technical difficulties while watching these videos. Horizons Highlights As ever we are continually impressed by the screenshots and videos our community post on social media and on our forums. Here's a collection of a few of our favorites Friendship from this week. Charging. Flight assists. Who needs flight assists? Not Cepheus 7, apparently. As KNWLDG 101 sets out on an epic journey to Sagittarius A for the first Three, time, he two, looks to see a one, constellation engage. guiding his way. Commander Fabry 91 has takes on the sunset in a thrilling race across a planet's surface. Galnet Focus. Welcome to our weekly roundup of news stories and events in the elite, dangerous galaxy. A coordinated campaign to establish a permanent outpost in the Colonia Nebula is already underway. Now, a second is about to begin. The ATDDD 774C2 faction has announced plans to establish an outpost in the Colonia Nebula, and has placed an open order for materials for use in the construction. Pilots who deliver titanium, semiconductors and robotics to Jix station in the EOL Pru RSTD 394 system will be generously compensated. Allowing a week of conflict, the Pleiades Resource Enterprise has confirmed that the Federation has taken control of the Pleiades Sector EVC-216 system, having ousted the incumbent Imperial Inquisition. In a statement, a spokesperson for the organization thanked the many Federal pilots who took part in the operation. Authorities in the ARC system have reported a sharp increase in the number of criminals operating in the area. Reports indicate that the agitators are attacking pilots traveling in the system, disrupting trade and generally causing discord. To counter this threat, Arc Commodities has placed a kill order on all wanted ships operating in the system, and has promised to reward pilots who deliver bounty vouchers to Austin Town Station. Comes chatter. With all that's gone on this week, Comes have been quiet. That said, Commando Barnes dude struggling to keep on the right side of the law did tickle us. Thank you for listening to the Elite Dangerous Newsletter 138. Fly safe, Commanders. Welcome back. Now, um, I'm going to continue on exploring this little galaxy here because... Oh, if you look at the planets, um, it might have a cut, might have an Earth like in here. Okay. I'm hoping we do. Um, 
if we dig a nerf block, it'll be good. It could probably water world at say, and then maybe a bit uh, metal world again. But I have to admit, I do like the new. Um, yeah, I do like the new system map. That's going to be good. Uh, I do like the new ships that will be coming out there. It's going to be awesome and delivering the rich yuppies around the universe. Um, I also do like the idea of you able to summon your ships um, around the universe. Because um, to me, okay, let's say you spend all that time building up a little fighter and you're fantastic. You've taken it to the engineers. You've got it down to its book. You've got it down to its pure, simple thing. It's a fighter. That's it. And you want to take this little craft into a conflict zone or into a certain into areas. I'm going too fast again. Oh well. Double loop correction. And you want to take this into these places and you really want to do some damage in your little fighter. What better ship to do it in? What better way to do it in than just to summon it there? Now I do like the new ships that you can um, spawn into another ship and also higher um, NPCs. Now, to me, that I wouldn't mind that either. Right. Um, it's a body of terraforming, it's a high metal world. This will, I'm not quite sure if this will be anything, but we'll give it a crack. Um, to me, that would be awesome. Like, you hire somebody else, you can get them to be defensive um, or a, a hostile form of attacking or de defensive sort of um, form of attacking. Depends on the situation, the pilot skills, and so forth. Now, you could also take control of this said fighter yourself. I mean, some of this new stuff is going to be awesome. Um, I want all three um, of the ships if I can. I think you're going to fit two probably in some of your um, in some of the vessels and some of the bigger ships you might be able to fit two I think in there or uh, and I hope you can fit two different types um, I like the concept of 3D printing <laughs> it's one way of getting around it um, teleporting your ships to another another area um, yeah it's a, another way of doing it as well um, but I have to admit some of the Really, going to be some of the interesting stuff is going to be more interesting stuff that's going to come out. I think uh, I still want my own planet base though, or asteroid planet slash base. Oh, another body. Wow, that's that's impressive. I think that's going to be that's going to be a water world or not, not, might be another metal content world or high metal content world. As you can see, I've been out here in a while and kind of stir crazy sometimes. But when you come across a system like this, another one, wow! It just sort of like, yeah, really, really good. Okay, this one's going to take a while. We'll continue on. I'm liking the um, sky in this system. This next nebula is going to be awesome because I think it's a slightly... It's a blue, so I think what blue represents as well. Oh, it's a water. Found out what the pink pink nebulas represent. Um, oh, God, I can't remember the name of it. You just don't double. I don't get too fast. This is the closest one. Mm -hmm. we're, almost, we're almost there. We've got. I'll scan all these first and then we will um, have a good look at them. Come on. Um, So pretty much I've said my piece on what the new stuff's coming out. I do like it. I hope the planetary landing is going to be 
more interesting. I hope they don't, they don't make it too cartoonish. Would be the word for it. Um, I hope they make it so it's interesting. We can land on the planets, and, it, and it's the graphics are a lot better. I know that's going to kill probably my my system anyway. It probably kill my system landing on graphics. I have to turn the kind of thing down, but I don't mind that. Oh, come on. It started slowing down. Oh, well, let's just go straight past it. this scan that's one world that is cool wonder what this one will be and that's what you know metal world could be a nerf world but I doubt it but coming across like this in a system is really worth it No, that won't be terraformable. These ones won't be, I don't think. That will definitely won't be terraformable, but that's okay. I wonder if I come across, like, I wonder where the graveyards, um, of the old elite, of the old elite ships are. I wonder if you can actually pick apart the graveyards. I know they had that in the original of it. I uh, did my imagination of that right in there. Oh. I wonder if the Thargoids will come out this far or Bounty Hunters will come out this far after anybody in particular and stuff like that. If you cause enough bounties somewhere and they come out after you. I wonder how the Thargoids will treat you. This is the question I'm asking. Is it how the Thargoids will treat you as if you draw, say, weapons on them, start firing, firing at them, they will then fire back at you? Or if you don't draw your weapons, how are the how are they going to how are they going to make that? How are they going to treat you? Um, is it because you, if you feel that are they friends of the barnacles or are they enemies of the barnacles? Or are they neutral of the barnacles? How they still allied with um, one of the factions? Or are they enemies of one of the factions? So this is the, the multiple question. Now, I hope they don't just go on wreck. <laughs> like they, they go, oh, well, you're, you're the king. Oh, you're a king of the empire, so therefore you're going to be our enemy type thing, and we shoot you on sight no matter what. Um, or you're an admiral of the federation, going well. Guess what? You're you're, you're a dead sucker, because you're you're the you're protecting the um our ancient enemy, the barnacles. Um, I wonder how they're going to do it. Are they going to do it so that, so that they're going to attack everybody on sight, and it's an even that's sort of like going to be. One ship basically just kicked everybody's ass, or it's going to be interesting to see how they introduce the Thargoids eventually into the game. Uh, introduce um, other ships you come across when you're exploring into the game, and how they interact with you. Is it they scan you and say that you're peaceful, um, or can they scan the history of your particular bit of your particular ship? where it's been, what it's doing, um, why you're out here, and so forth. And how are they going to achieve all those in a game? I think I'll bookmark this system to come back to it when I get back to known civilization. Or if the space madness kicks in. I have many days yet. <laughs> 
it's on to journey. Yeah, let's just uh, we'll scan these two last two anyway because we're here already. I think that's going to be the same ones before, so. But I wonder all that. How are they going to make it so? Um, are they a friend of yours or are they an enemy of yours? How are they going to introduce that? Now, I have to admit, I do like the Beluga's look. Um, you've got nothing blocking your view, which is fantastic. Now, if they could make we can get get the beluga to um, travel like a decent jump range like go to the engineers and really boost it and squeeze it by the balls and get a decent jump range out of it I would take it as explorer because okay the reason why I do like the asp explorer I, I, okay fair enough okay you can get the, the anaconda but the wires would drive me insane you can get the anaconda to drop jump well, to do a jump range up to 60 something light years or something like that. Somebody's got it up to 59. Oh, don't. Another loop of correction. Da -da -da. Da -da. So I'll slow down. Uh, no, not going to slow down. Anyway, um, yes, you can do all that, but the view is terrible. I know you could go to external view and all that wonderful jazz, um, but that, to me, you want to see the cockpit type thing. You want to see it like you're, you're inside a vehicle, not floating through space with nothing between you and um, space. Ah, that's a high middle point that world. So this was a good fight. One more to world. One. So we've got one water world, one, two, three terraformable worlds, which are high metal content ones. So we're going to, we're going to okay, do this one. And we've got one more planet to go to. This should be just a nice planet, but I'm not worried about that. Oh, this scout thing again. So that's about 5,000 light years. 5,000 light seconds. I don't say light years. Uh, yeah, as I said before, I love this game. There's not many games, as far as I'm concerned, that beat this. I'll bookmark this one. Thank you. Now we'll come back to this one. Um, when, we, when we finish our journey, we get back to Civilized Space and we sell the information we have. I might try to do a sell them at this station. If that's open by the time I get to there, because that station needs all the help it can get. Uh, I'll, all I want to do is become triple elite. I'm almost there. I have 56% pioneer. So, back to my original thing is that how will the Thargoids treat individual pilots? Are they going to treat us all like we're hostile, or, or is it going to be based off? A form of role playing where they'll jump in, and if you don't, if you don't draw your weapons automatically and lock onto them, they don't fire upon you. They might start talking to you, you might be able to learn something or trade with them. In language, also, how is how that going to play out? And I'm hoping that they don't tie it to ranking because, well, I'm a king and an animal. And if the Thargoids don't want the Federation or the Empire and, and the Empire, I'm pretty much going to be screwed. <laughs> no matter what ship I'm in, I'll be, I might as well just take a big tank with me everywhere I go and then just summon all my wall, summon all my ships to where I'm in because the Thargoids will just simply take me out, try to take me out every five seconds. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's going to make it interesting how they set that up and how. But going back to the ship, now if you look at this ship, the only thing that's really blocking the ship are these bars, that's it. To make this a perfect ship, get rid of the bars and you would have a perfect ship. It can jump fit pretty far, like my, my little humble one, um, can jump 39 light years, 39.98 light years and what's the average? Average about 38 light years I can jump. 
Um, that's how I try to do it. Even though I've got mine completely not the, um, weaponized, they're not on at the moment. Um, I'm going to get the scanner on, so I've got four pulse lasers, two multi cannons, advanced discovery spanner, and that's about it. The chef launcher and stuff like that. But I never worry about switching any of them on. Because I don't need to. I'm out here quite content unless I come across something on my little map and says, that doesn't look nice. That's when I'll start switching things on. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. And then we'll find out if they're friend or foe. Hopefully they're going to be friends. My Thargoids are going to be friendly too. Not just attack everything like they did in the original game. It's where you, they pulled you out of hyperspace and you basically had no choice but to fight them. Um, I hope they don't just base it on your rank. Um, because like you look at it, okay, I'm technically elite in combat, elite in trading, um, almost elite in exploring and talking about the, the space madness and all that. I'm hoping they're going to base on maybe say ship class. And so, you know, it'd be more interesting if they did base it on that. This will be a nice sea world, I know, I think. And that's how I look at it. It's like you want to think, okay, if you're flying, uh, I suppose, uh, so if you're firing, say, like a little simple, um, simple ship that has no weapons on it, do the will of the to attack you or won't they attack ship you? drive charging. No one will know about that. But we'll jump to this next section and have a quick look at that and. Oh, that's cool. Four, there. three, two, one, engage. Anyway, nothing by randoms on about that. As you said before, this is probably the best ship in the game. Now, if I can actually make the the, 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 the new one out that looks like that, then I'll be right. Okay, I'm going to scan this system. Now we've got 10 planets. Well, I'm going to scan all these planets as well. But I'll head... Oh, okay, we've got... Possibly gas was one there. But I think we've got the rest of iron. That's potential another iron one. We'll see how we go. This one's got the moon. That'll be playing nothing. That terraform would be not interesting to know. Let's get some fuel, and I'm just going to head off. Fuel scooping. See, if I come across an interesting system, I'm going to put a little bookmark and so I can come back to it later with a later video and try to work out how much roughly that system will be worth. Complete. Stuff like that will be good too. And when I go early. so I'm going to. Continue Continue on exploring this uh, new system. We'll say goodbye to our little white star there. The new suns and new planet looks are going to be interesting as well. Um, and the new jumping will be fantastic. Anyway, my name is King Admiral Commander Black Star Lord signing off. Thank you again for watching my videos and all comments are welcome. You all have a great day now.